father. Good afternoon, Roger. They told me at the hospital you might be here. Do you have a moment? Well, uh, sure. Sure, come in. Uh, have a seat, please. Listen, is there anything I can get you? I just made myself a mint julep. Oh, thanks anyway. But please, you go ahead with your drink. If you don't mind, I'll do just that. <laughs> I've, uh, I've wanted to come by to tell you in person how sorry I am about Ed. He was a fine man. I know. Thank you. I only hope I can live up to it. Of course. Roger. I hope you won't think that I'm intruding. In one sense, this is none of my business. However, as a friend and an admirer of your father, and because the other person involved has taken me into her confidence, because I've advised her in the past and she's asked my help, this visit may be justified. I must talk to you about Delia Ryan. Coming up on an all-new Being Erica, she's seen her future. Nine years from now, something awful is going to happen. Am I dead? Discovered secrets from the past. They assaulted you. You don't know what you're talking about. But will everything Erica's been through... I just want to make you happy. I'm sorry. Prepare her for what comes next. Why is this happening? The last episode before the life-shattering season finale. All will be revealed. Being Erica. All new tonight at 11, only on SoapNet. You know how it is. You look in the mirror one day and you go, how am I gonna lose this weight? E-Diet's meal delivery from eDiets.com. It's the easiest, smartest, most delicious way to eat great and finally lose the weight. I know you're thinking, eat great and lose weight? Really? Really. You'll love the food. There's no MSG, no fake sugars. The food tastes fantastic. It's awesome. Very delicious. It tastes wonderful. Call now or go to eDiets.com. Choose from over 100 fresh prepared meals. Not dehydrated diet food, but really delicious food. eDiets will deliver your favorite meals and snacks in a chill, fresh container. All you have to do is relax, enjoy, and eat great all the way to slim. I lost 115 pounds. 65 pounds. 25 pounds. 94 pounds. Along the way, eDiets.com gives you real support. Terrific online tools, access to registered dietitians and trainers, and friends who care about your success. They're there with you to hold your hand, and they really care. Truthfully, I like everything about eDiets. I've lost 30 pounds. All of a sudden, I find myself a changed person. Hey, I made it to 50 pounds, and look at me now, I'm 60 pounds. Millions of people have turned eDiets.com to lose the weight. Now it's your turn. Call or go to eDiets.com and sign up for seven full days of meals, three meals per day, fresh prepared just for you, plus snacks. So don't wait. Join eDiets. Eat great food and lose weight fast. I believe that eDiets can change people's lives. My husband will often say, you're the hot wife. That's just boosted my confidence a lot. eDiets has changed my life forever. Call to find out how you can get one week of meals absolutely free. That's right. One week of fresh prepared food, one week of weight loss, one week of success, free. Free? What are you waiting for? Call or go online to get started now. Call 1-800-279-1604 or visit ediets.com now. And then, after we've discussed all the conditions at Gilcrest Manor and heard Miss Mill's statement, then we have Mr. Zabo himself denying everything. You got Nick on tape? I sure did. And Sam, he lies, lies, lies. Does it show? Can you tell he's lying? I can tell. Oh, uh, he doesn't have anything to do with the everyday operation at Gilcrest Manor. He was utterly appalled at the suggestion that there may have been abuses. Mary, you're turning into a first-rate reporter. That's a fine job. Thank you, sir. I thought it was pretty super myself. I only wish I'd been able to find Buffy to tell him we were going on the air with it. Oh, he'll find out. 
Mary, this is the best story we've ever had around here. No kidding. Channel R, Sam Crowell. Hello, Sam. Nick Zabo. Ah, Mr. Zabo. How are you this afternoon? Well, that's what I'm calling you about. I hope I'm not catching you at a busy moment. No, no, no. We're just going over some paperwork. That's fine. That's fine. Look, something's come to my attention that's got me a little disturbed. Is that so? Yeah. Uh, Mary Ryan was by earlier telling me about a story you're planning on a local nursing home. Gilchrist Manor? Yes, uh, we're running that story tonight. That's terrible. I mean, really terrible. What is? Well, the conditions Mary described, and I'm uh, doubly embarrassed because I happen to have a financial interest in Gilchrist Manor. A uh, controlling interest, we understand. Well, from a money standpoint, yes, but I have nothing at all to do with the management of the home. And there's no reason to associate me with the day-to-day -day operations. That's the responsibility of a Mr. Hugh Sharp. Has your investment in Gilcrest Manor been profitable, Mr. Zabo? Uh, now, look, I suppose it has, but that doesn't mean I knew what was going on. Now, believe me, I'm taking all steps to, uh, to alleviate the abuses at the nursing home and see that they are corrected. You are? You better believe it. Well, uh, if you have enough influence to get those conditions corrected now, then obviously you could have had them corrected months ago. I didn't know anything about them. For all practical purposes, you own the nursing home, which makes you responsible. Hey, now look, Crowell, I'm trying to be reasonable with you. I told you I had nothing to do with it, and I'm asking you not to bring my name into the story. I don't see how we can avoid it. Well, try a little harder. If my name comes up, scratch it. You Sharp is the guy you're after. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't see it that way. Well, I'm telling you to see it that way. Do you know who I am? Yes, sir, you're a local businessman who's worried about being embarrassed by one of our news stories. All right, buddy, you're going to hear from me about this. If I do, it'll go right on the air. Channel our newsman threatened by local businessman. How do you think that'll sound? Oh, you have an answer for everything, don't you? I better have. We'll see. Is my daughter around? Rini, isn't she uh, home? Why would she be home? Because she phoned in sick. Oh, well, maybe she's at the doctor. Listen, Crowell. Yeah. If you decide to change your mind on this, I uh, might be able to do you a favor one day. Uh, thanks, Mr. Zabo, but the only favor I need right now is a sensational news story, and I think that's just what I've got. Oh, my. <laughs> Mary, the story is getting bigger and bigger every minute. Well, I only hope it does some good for the people at Gilcrest Manor. Well, I don't know about them, but it's uh, certainly going to do some good for the news team of Crowell and Ryan. I can tell you that. <laughs> Mr. Sharp, please. Hello, you. This is Nick Zabo. There's going to be a news program on Channel R tonight. I want you to see it. No, I want you to see it here with me. Mother, may I introduce Rini Zabo? Rini, this is my mother. How do you do, Mrs. Carter? I'm delighted to meet you, my dear. <laughs> oh, and this um, is Alice there. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. <laughs> Um, could he be, uh, a Lhasa Apso? Oh, well, how clever of you. Are you a dog fancier, Rini? Well, I, I read this article once, and it was so wonderful that I never forgot it. Uh, they're from Tibet, and they were, they were known for their bravery, and they were used as watchdogs teamed with a larger dog, and the larger dog, uh, stayed on the outside to guard, and the Lhasa Apso was inside to warn the family. <laughs> <laughs> Smallest watchdog in the world but with a very big bark. <laughs> Please sit down. Thank you. Do you have a dog of your own? Oh, no, I've been away to school so much that I really never had a chance. Oh, oh this is lovely. Oh, would you like wine or a drink? Wine would be perfect. Bucky, would you do the honors? Certainement, Mama. <laughs> I'd like to say that I'm, I'm really very sorry about your sister. Bucky told me a lot about her, and, and he made her sound like she was so full of life. Thank you, Rini. She was. And it seems terribly unfair for someone to die that young. Listen, she wouldn't want us sitting around feeling bad about it. Thank you, darling. Thanks. You're welcome. Have you lived in New York City all your life? Oh, well, sort of. Uh, my mother left us when, uh, when I was 10. And uh, so since then, I've uh, spent most of my time either away at boarding school or at summer camp. So I, I guess I really haven't lived in the city except for vacations. Did you like being away that much? 
Well, it was what my father wanted. You know, with my mother gone, he wanted to have me taken care of, so I spent a lot of my time going from convent school to convent school, including college. Hey, listen, isn't anybody gonna drink this stuff? Oh, sure. <laughs> to you, my dear. Uh, and a happy first meeting. Thank you. <laughs> I cannot tell you what a pleasure it is just to be here. <laughs> Bucky tells me that you're out of school and working in a television station. Yes. And I have discovered that working is much better than school. That's very enterprising of you to plunge in so young. Well, I've never liked to be idle, uh, except for lying in the sun, of course. Of course. <laughs> no, I love it. I, I work at a cable television station. And uh, though what we do is not seen by a lot of people exactly, I do get a chance to do a lot of things that I wouldn't be allowed to if it were, you know, a commercial television station. And a chance to learn. Yes, that's it. We, um, we do a news program, and we also have, you know, special reports on the local community. Would you, would you like to see the program? Why, very much. Well, gee, it's a little early now, but it'll be on in a while. <laughs> it's a very large three-man department. You'll get to see my co-workers. There's uh, Sam Crowell, and then there's Mary Ryan, and they're both terrific. Oh, I think that uh, Bucky has mentioned Mary Ryan to me. Mm. Your father must be very proud of all this dedication and enterprise. I hope so. Does your father work in New York, too? Um, Mrs. Carter, my father owns and runs a, a funeral home, and he also has investments in real estate on the west side. Oh, I see. It isn't very glamorous, and uh, there's not much prestige about it, but it is a service that is badly needed. Yes, of course. And more than that, he's, he's a dear, sweet, wonderful person, and I, I'm very proud of him. I think perhaps he's the one who should be proud to have such a lovely and devoted daughter. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Bucky, your mother is very nice. Well, what'd you expect? <laughs> I don't know exactly. <laughs> oh, have an hors d'oeuvre, and do have some more wine. Oh, thank you. You know, I was terrified at the idea of meeting you. But you are making this one of the nicest afternoons I've had in my lifetime. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it, too. And there's still time to have a good chat before the show. A paternity revealed. Bucky and Nicholas deserve to know the truth. If I tell them, it'll blow them apart. Either you tell them, or I will. And... Johnny's recruiting you to work for the Zakaris. Will his need to prove himself pushing to the mob? I have to make this choice on my own. Watch General Hospital weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. together what can a tiny grain of rice do it can't run or even walk but man can that little rice fly just 90 seconds from the microwave to the table it's my uncle Ben's ready rice begin with Ben and get to family time faster. Want more of your favorite soaps? That's great. Log on to abc.com slash daytime. Watch current full episodes of All My Children, General Hospital, and One Life to Live. Online critics love it. Plus, get exclusive sneak peeks of what's coming up next. Sounds like a thumbs up to me. Connect with other fans to discuss what's on your mind. I always want to hear what you have to say. And check out the 101 galleries to get an intimate look at the history of your favorite characters. That's the best news I've heard all day. Find it all now at abc.com slash daytime. Delia Ryan, I, I'm afraid I don't understand. Delia is my parishioner. She's also my friend. She's come to me frequently during the past year for whatever counsel I could give. Just at the moment, she's a very unhappy girl. But isn't that between you and Delia? I mean, I'm not a Catholic She's father, asked but... me to speak to you on her behalf. She has? Yes. She's told me about your situation. 
I beg your pardon? She's told me that you've been lovers. Well, has she also told you, Father, what's happened between us is more than a casual affair? I love her very much. So she's given me to understand. But apparently that's become a source of considerable distress to her. I wish it weren't. I want to marry her. Yeah. Well, Roger, that's where the situation seems to be getting rather out of hand. How can you talk of marrying, dearly, when you know perfectly well she wants desperately to return to her own marriage and make it work? But that's what Delia thinks she wants. I don't believe I have to tell you that according to our faith, Delia's marriage is a sacrament which prohibits any other marriage while Frank is still alive. But there are Catholics who have been divorced. But they do not remain within the church. Now, Roger, I don't believe that you and I should get into a theological discussion. What's important here is you and Delia. Burdened as we all are by human frailty, it's understandable how the two of you came to make such a mistake. Look, Father, I really don't want to talk to you about this. You're going to give me a lecture on morality that I just don't want to hear. I'm going to talk to you about Delia and what she wants. And if you love her as you say you do, you will listen. But she doesn't know what she wants. She's bright and warm and, and wonderful and funny. But she doesn't want anything because it's never occurred to her that she's entitled to anything. I think Delia knows very well what she wants. No, she doesn't. She's never had anything. She's never gone anywhere. She can't see past Johnny Ryan's bar in one direction and the Hudson River in the other. Now, in my opinion, there is a great deal more to it than that. That's why she's afraid to leave the Ryans. Because they represent the only security she's ever known. A Maeve started mothering her when she was about six. Her brother grew up with the Ryans. She went with Pat in school and later with Frank. Father, she doesn't even know what the outside world is like. Perhaps because she doesn't want to know about that outside world, Roger. Perhaps it's because the structure and security provided by a large, loving family is what she does want. But she's capable of so much more. And I want to give her that. In bed at night, I think about everything that I can give her because of what my father left me. But right now, Delia's like a, a little bird that's had her wings clipped. She can't fly. And I'm going to change all that. She has to make those choices for herself. No, I'm going to make them for her. Everyone's, everyone wants Delia to conform to a mold. Look, they want her to live by the rules set down by the Ryans. And I want to take her away from all that. I want her to live in furs and, and silk and crystal. I want to show her Paris and London and Rome. I want to teach her to fly. It sounds very glamorous, the life you're talking about. Amusing, expensive, certainly. But in my opinion, it doesn't compare to the love and long-term sense of purpose in her present life with Frank and her baby and Maeve and Johnny. I'm concerned about her future, too, Father. Roger, her future is not with you. Why not? Because she has a husband who doesn't love her, who had his own affair for three years. Now, that's over. Frank has given up Jill for Delia. Frank gave up Jill for his political career. Now, if Frank wants to give up the woman he loves for material things, for a chance to run for Congress, that's all right. But, Father, I'm not going to give up the woman I love for anything. Because when we're together, I know it's right. It's right for me. And it's right for her. Next, spend some time in Genoa City with the young and the restless. Later, see who's stirring up trouble in Pine Valley and all my children. Only on SoapNet. People are talking about General Hospital's Sean Butler. Patricia Rich posted on Facebook, he is a good-looking bad boy with a good side. I'm really digging this one. Elizabeth Cross agrees. Oh, yes, he is a sexy man. Sookie Williams Ellis adds, I trust my eyes when I look at him, and they like what they see. Judy McCoy says, good choice, GH. And Kathleen Hahn sums it up, so 
damn hot. People are talking about General Hospital. Weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. There's a way to let go of some of the annoying symptoms menopause brings. It's one-a-day menopause formula. The only complete multivitamin with soy isoflavones to help address hot flashes and mild mood changes. One-a-day menopause formula. Hey. Hey, Walgreens. I'm kind of liking Matt here, but I'm kind of allergic to Bruce. <laughs> Got any ideas? Try 24-hour Zyrtec for prescription strength relief from your allergy symptoms, indoors and out. <laughs> and right now, when you buy a Zyrtec 45 count, you can get a 14 count free at Walgreens. Nothing worked for my eczema until a dermatologist recommended Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing Eczema Lotion. It has the strongest non-prescription itch medicine plus Restora to help heal the symptoms associated with eczema. Cortisone 10 for eczema. Feel the heal. The first Erica Kane wedding. Finally getting married again. Without Erica Kane. She just vanished. Runaway bride. Be with me. Or victim of foul play. My mother's life could be in danger. Watch All My Children weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 8 on SoapNet. 15 seconds with Melissa Archer. I'm different than Natalie, I think, because, believe it or not, Natalie is able to... Uh, speak up a little when it comes to what she wants, and I think I'm a little more timid when it comes to that. Catch Melissa Archer on One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. This week... I killed someone, Mom. Two parents face a difficult choice. Can you actually see turning in your own son? Then... He tried to kill himself. Rex wants his family back. I will do whatever I can. I love you. Will you marry me? Watch One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. Coming up on an all-new Being Erica, she's seen her future. Nine years from now, something awful is going to happen. Am I dead? Discovered secrets from the past. They assaulted you. They don't know what you're talking about. But will everything Erica's been through... I just want to make you happy. I'm sorry. Prepare her for what comes next. Why is this happening? The last episode before the life-shattering season finale. All will be revealed. Being Erica. All new tonight at 11, only on SoapNet. Mr. Sabo, I went to uh, considerable inconveniences to come over here as you requested. Relax, Huey, relax. But Mr. Zabo, no buts. I... You know what they say. If it's inevitable, enjoy it. Mr. Enjoy Sabo. it, Huey. This should be Channel R now. This should be so interesting. I've never known anyone connected with a news show before. Well, Channel R is a very small operation, but it's a good one. Hey, how's that for timing, huh? Mary Ryan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gilcrest Manor Nursing Home, located just off Riverside Drive at 178th Street. For some time, Channel R has been receiving complaints about Gilcrest Manor, about both the quality and the quantity of food served, about the absence of adequate medical personnel, and about generally unsafe conditions. Scatter rugs used throughout the establishment. Dear me. Yeah, she's rail, right, I've been there. Narrow corridors in which two wheelchairs cannot pass, and so on. Recently, those complaints were dramatized by the attempted suicide of Hector Holbert, age 74, as an act of protest against the conditions in which he was living. In particular, Mr. Holbert was incensed at being forced to live with six other persons in a room designed for three. Fortunately, Mr. Holbert didn't succeed in killing himself but he did succeed in bringing the problem of Gilcrest Manor to public attention. Good for you, Mr. Holbert, and we oh, pray your bold action wonderful. will not have been Oh, made. isn't she? In an effort to explore these charges, Channel R has obtained an exclusive interview with another resident of Gilcrest Manor, Miss Beatrice Mills. Oh. You like the show, They're Huey? They're loose on the floor, and I... That's what it's all about. All. She said that they were taking and Mills to see Hector at the hospital. hand railings along the corridor. And, and there's a very slick floor at what we call the iron cook. The iron cook? Yes, that's the uh, juice soup coffee machine, oh. I see. Well, the floor there is very slippery. Quite often it's wet and dangerous. A true liar! Where Mrs. Monroe had her accident. Oh, yes, poor dear. 
I'll never know why Mr. Sharp never understood that Mrs. Monroe was very badly hurt. We all did. Great. I must Just great. That a few months ago, Mrs. Sally Monroe, who is also a resident of the nursing home, had a very bad fall and later died because of it. That's right. Ah. Uh, you know, Gilcrest Manor used to be a lovely place to live. Oh, and it was quiet and friendly, and everybody was treated kindly. There were certainly none of the conditions that drove Hector, uh, that is, Hector Holbert, to do what he did. And would you tell us what Mr. Holbert did, Miss Moon? Mr. Holbert, in an effort to draw attention to our troubles, tried to commit suicide this afternoon. And I, I'm still waiting to find out if he's all right. Well, we all hope he will be. Thank you very much, Miss Wills. The interview you just saw with Miss Mills was taped in our studio shortly after Hector Holbert attempted suicide at Gilcrest Manor. One of the greatest difficulties encountered by Channel R was determining exactly yeah, is who is responsible for done. such conditions. The administrator, Mr. Hugh Sharp, is not the true owner, although his name appears on the title of the record. After considerable difficulty, we have discovered that the controlling financial interest in Gilcrest Manor is held by Nick Zabel, proprietor of the Riverside Funeral Parlor, and allegedly behind much of the loan sharking and bookmaking in the Riverside community. Oh, no. We informed Mr. Zabel. No, that, that's, that's not true. Look, maybe there's some mistake. The documentation linking him to Gilcrest Manor. And when asked to comment on Channel R's charges, Mr. Zabo had the following to say. Well, uh, uh, Gilcrest Manor is one of the many properties owned by my corporation. Uh, since I, I have no direct contact with the home or its residents, I rely completely on the expertise of uh, management. And how do you answer those who charge you with making money by depriving senior citizens? Well, Mary, uh, uh, Riverside senior citizens are the backbone of our community, and I respect and admire them. Oh, that's why I was pleased to invest in Gilcrest Manor, which, incidentally, has enjoyed a fine reputation for over 25 years. Uh, if there are irregularities, they are very recent ones and will certainly be remedied. I want to thank Channel R for uh, looking into the situation because, well, it might have been days before I heard of any problems. And if, uh, if uh, any Gilcrest Manor residents are listening, I send them my warmest personal regards. God bless you all. That's this true. Every word of it. He, he's not a bookie. He's not a loan shark. He's not. Our oh, dear, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I... ...on the recent events have remained unanswered. Evidence linking Zabo to Gilcrest Manor has been turned over to the Special Prosecutor's Office by Channel R. And Frank Ryan, member of the City Council for Riverside, has promised that a full investigation will be forthcoming. We'll have more on this story at that time. Mr. Zabo. What is this, some mess you got us into, Huey? Now you sit down, keep your mouth shut, and let me think. It's not true, any of it. Oh, Mrs. Carter, please let me tell you about my father. Family always comes first in Pine Valley, but how far will the residents go to protect their loved ones? Catch up on all the drama with a new episode of All My Children, weeknights at 8 on SoapNet.